It's been another hectic week of preparations at Starbase for Flight 4. Booster 11 was rolled back to the production site for final work ahead of its launch. New buildings are springing up around the site like weeds, and there's been major ongoing upgrades conducted on the chopsticks ahead of their first catch attempt, potentially as soon as Flight 5. Howdy Star fans, I'm Jack Byer for NSF, and this is your Starbase Update. Let's start off at the production site, where both vehicles for Flight 4 now reside, and where work is ongoing on the Star Factory and the new office building. Over at the Star Factory, we see the forward expansion and the center expansion advancing rapidly. This huge production facility is clearly one of SpaceX's priorities right now, which makes sense, as it will host the production of Starship version 2 going forward. It's still weird to me to see an actual factory here instead of a hodgepodge of tents and other facilities, but this is what we want to see as Starbase matures. And there's another building that's progressing rapidly, and that is the new office building. SpaceX is constructing this office building for additional workspace in Boca Chica. We can see multiple levels, or rather, the frame of multiple levels already. Just a few days after that last footage was taken, you can see here how three very clear levels are already visible for the office building, which is being built right next to the Star Factory. Now we don't exactly know what this office space is going to be used for. Could it be for engineers, or accounting, or administrative purposes? We'll just have to wait and see, but my gut is that all of the above. As usual, the Starbase skyline is changing rapidly, and this is no exception. What was a Pathfinder development complex just three or four years ago is now becoming one of SpaceX's most important facilities, with office space, a giant production facility, employee housing, and much more. Of course, with so much progress everywhere, and SpaceX moving into Starship version 2, some things have to go. For example, this barrel section, which is being scrapped by a worker. SpaceX is cutting these scrap barrel pieces into smaller sections to prepare them to be transported away. Here's an interesting small little detail. You can see how they first cut a door to get inside the section, and then work from there. Maybe it's just me, but I thought that was kind of neat. Of course, all of this is not done without proper safety. A crane makes sure the ring does not collapse while workers are inside of it. Once they're done inside and outside, they make one section into two, which are then easier to collapse and transport away. You can see how fast the next ring is being placed here. Even the scrapping of rings at this point seems very streamlined. A welcome recent development with the Star Factory is the large amount of glass paneling that will be hosted on the outside of the structure. Let's hope that these glass walls will help us peek inside the factory as it becomes operational. Over at the Massey Outpost, we saw work ongoing on the flame trench for the new ship static fire stand that will be here. Mainly, we saw the lift of the flame bucket, which will be used to deflect the main part of the exhaust. We also saw multiple parts of the flame bucket being transported to the area. You can see them being lifted here. Back at the production site, and peeking into one of the mega bays, we can see Booster 14. As a reminder, barring SpaceX skipping any vehicles, Booster 14 would fly on the seventh flight of Starship. This is still a few flights out, but it's already well into production to get ready just in time. SpaceX really has no shortage of vehicles at this point, it's only a matter of testing and flying them. Moving next to the Rocket Garden, we saw some concrete work being done. This is the beginning of the new parking garage, which will feature five stories of parking next to the construction site. While there's no urgent update on them, here's just a quick check-in on the tower sections at the Sanchez site. Of course, there's still time before they will even be needed at the launch site, but it's still good to check in from time to time to see if anything's changed. As you can see, it looks like, no, not much has changed, but hopefully we'll see some progress on these soon. In front of the Star Factory, the development dome section that we've seen recently is still sitting around. There are some good clues that updated domes will be used on Starship version 2. Elon talked about version 2 in his recent presentation, and we saw some pictures of domes. We actually have a video coming out Tuesday, that's tomorrow as you watch this, with a deep dive on all the things that we learned from this presentation, so stay tuned and make sure you watch that. Speaking of exciting development hardware, we talked about it last week, but the development payload barrel is still sitting outside of the Star Factory. It seems no further work has been done on this section, but as it's a developmental pathfinder, it's crucial we keep an eye on it in case anything else happens. The label on it actually says Payload Dev Stiffened Barrel, so that confirms what we thought about this section. Let's move our attention now to the launch site and the ongoing preparations there for Flight 4, especially on the chopsticks. Over at the orbital launch mount, work very much continues. We can see lifts at different places around the mount, including work on the QD area, the main mount, 
and even the chopsticks area. The chopsticks, of course, are becoming more and more important as we get closer to SpaceX attempting a booster catch with them. While this flight will not feature a catch attempt, it could be, according to Elon Musk, as early as the next flight. That would be Flight 5. That is rather soon in rocket terms, as Flight 5 could very well be around this summer. So all of this work on the chopsticks makes sense as SpaceX gets ready to try a catch with them soon. Here we can see them working on all of the actuators and other parts of the chopsticks. But not only the direct flight components are seeing work. SpaceX is working on maintaining the berm at the orbital tank farm. This berm protects the tank farm against the power of the super heavy booster at liftoff. It's rather hard to identify what exactly work they are doing or if this is just an extended climbing exercise. Just kidding, a few days later we saw some concrete forms going up next to the berm, so it seems like SpaceX is working on refurbishing the concrete here. Modifications are also ongoing on the orbital launch mount's hold down clamps. Over 10 of the linkages for these clamps have been removed at this point. These are there to adjust the hold down clamps, so we'll probably see them return after the repair or adjustment that SpaceX is performing. One more of them was removed just two days later. The booster quick disconnect is also a focus of intense work. Early in the refurbishment of the orbital launch mount, SpaceX replaced multiple flex hoses going to the quick disconnect, and it seems like now is the time to work on the main hood, cover, and structure of the quick disconnect. A few days later, we then saw the removal of some parts from the quick disconnect, and it seems SpaceX was ready to replace some parts of the QD during the next few days. Small work note, but next to Starhopper, some rebar is also being assembled for further construction work at the tank farm. Next to the tank farm, SpaceX is also pouring more concrete as they are reinforcing and assembling a new wall and structure there. Yes, this is not great for our views from our various cameras, but this is just what happens as SpaceX turns this facility from a sandbar in the middle of nowhere into a bona fide rocket production facility and launch site. A few days later, the booster QD was retracted inside of its semi-operational hood as SpaceX worked more on it. The chopsticks also saw further work on both actuators and are currently spread in this wide open position over the pad probably for easy access. We then saw SpaceX installing ropes on the chopsticks. These straps are to keep them fixed while SpaceX works on the other sections of the chopsticks. You can see here how both chopstick parts are strapped together by a line. In contrast to all the BQD work, the ship quick disconnect seems to have seen barely any activity at all despite it being a big focus item after previous flights. This shot here is a great way to visualize the huge size of the chopstick hinges, since there's a human for scale. Late in the week, SpaceX intensified the work on the chopsticks actuator area. These hydraulic actuators are what are used to move the sticks. It seems like a removal or at least heavy maintenance was needed here, as the area became a bigger and bigger focus of work at the launch pad. Multiple workers, man lifts, and heavy hardware were present. Meanwhile, over at the orbital tank farm, pipes were flushed with water before installation, probably to remove potential sand and any other FOD inside of the pipes. After cleaning and draining, they were then lifted. Then the part was installed on the methane side of the tank farm. Some more concrete forms were also built to fill up more concrete walls at the tank farm. These are used to keep the concrete in place while it dries you can still see the freshly erected rebar in the center of the form. Back over at the chopsticks, in preparation for the removal of an actuator, the part was first disconnected from the chopstick area and then retracted back. This is why all of the equipment to fix the chopsticks in place was first attached. From here on, the chopstick could swing freely as it's no longer secured by the actuator. This actuator was then removed and then placed next to the pad. Just the day later, an upgraded actuator was installed. This will most likely allow the chopsticks to close faster and could be in preparation for the first catch attempt as early as Flight 5. The full flight stack is, of course, the biggest watch item for all of us, so let's focus on that for a moment. But before we do, we have to talk about this insane video that SpaceX tweeted showing a Raptor vacuum engine shutting down in slow motion. It's unclear which version of Raptor this engine is, but who really cares? This is one of the coolest rocket-related videos I can remember seeing in recent memory though I do wish the footage had been stabilized or the camera had been more securely mounted. More slow-mo like this would be amazing should SpaceX decide to share it. Next up, I hope we get Raptor engine startup, because that would be amazing. All right, now let's talk about the full stack for Starship's fourth test flight. Currently planned for some time in May, Booster 11 and Ship 29 are both getting ready in their respective bays for a return to the launch site for stacking and for potentially a wet dress rehearsal and then launch. The week started with, as predicted, a rollback of Booster 11. After successfully being static fired, the booster was removed from the orbital launch mount, placed on its transport stand, and rolled back to the production site. SpaceX then placed the booster on top of the work stand in the megabay, while also closing the door halfway through the lift. 
but we can still see it move through the bottom half of the door. The booster was put on this work stand to give workers easy access to the vehicle while conducting final checkouts and work on the engine section. Of course, in this area, the booster will also receive its hot staging ring, which it doesn't have yet. Oh, hey, look, it's a hot staging ring. Could this be for booster 11? Sadly, probably not. I'm pretty sure this is just the test hot stage ring that we saw way back before flight two, but I could be wrong. The path to readiness for the ship is also still quite a long one. Ship 29 has a lot of missing tiles right now. Friendly reminder, after the static fire campaign, SpaceX began to remove the tiles from the main body of Ship 29. It seems like they're really putting in a lot of effort into making the heat shield work. This means that large sections of Ship 29 are empty right now, and these gaps need to be filled before the vehicle will be ready to fly. However, we have seen SpaceX filling these gaps quickly on past vehicles, so Things could move fast once the steel surfaces are fully prepared and ready to receive tiles. And indeed, some work has occurred on tile replacement already. Here, we can see a SpaceX worker replacing some at the tip of Ship 29's nose cone. The nose cone is an especially delicate area for the heat shield, and it has a sharp curve, so placing tiles here can be more difficult. A few days later, the nose cone looked much better as SpaceX filled in the gaps there. Lower down on Ship 29, the big patch of adhesive glue was still visible days later. As a reminder, in some places, glue is used instead of the mechanical attachment pins for tiles. In this case, this is a section in between barrel sections at the forward dome of Ship 29, where use of glue is necessary. Next up, in preparation for a potential wet dress rehearsal, and of course flight, in the near future, we saw the delivery of more nitrogen, oxygen, and methane to the tank farm. The special guest here is the shuttle tanker, which features shuttle livery on the outside. Happy Chris Bergen noises. Let's hope that we get both vehicles back at the launch site soon, and they conduct a full wet dress rehearsal so that everything can be in place as we wait for the FAA to approve SpaceX's launch license. Of course, that will have to wait for the chopsticks to be operational again, but something tells me we won't have to wait long. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other.